Okay, so today you're gonna learn how to make lens dust. Obviously you knew this because you clicked on the video. It's titled lens dust This is the best way to make your footage feel more realistic because you're emulating a camera Anyways, cue the intro. So I was thinking we could get like an eagle and it an swoops eagle. down and it goes and then there's like explosions in the background and then the DaVinci Resolve logo drops down. Look, I get it. Making effects isn't for everyone. Some people just want to use them. So if you want to skip the tutorial, you can just download this effect. It's on my buy me a coffee. The link is down below. Maybe you don't want the effect. Well, there are tons of other effects on my buy me a coffee and you can look through them. Some of them are free. Most of them are free actually. So, okay, video time. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve. The very first thing we're going to do is grab an adjustment clip and uh, just place it above or wherever, you know, and then uh, go into Fusion. So we need to make the shape of the dust particles or the bokeh. What we can do is hit Shift Space, type in S N. Uh, yeah, this this thing. This is this is what we want. Then right after that, we're going to add in an S render we're going to bring that into the first window by hitting one on our keyboards there it is let's change the output resolution to 1080 by 1080 just so we have this nice square format we're using this to make the shape of the bokeh but now we need to actually generate the particles so we got to bring up a p emitter <laughs> Now in style, we're going to change it from point to bitmap. And then you see, we got this gold arrow now. So in between our S render and our P emitter, <laughs> we're gonna add in a bitmap. Oh, ah! We're gonna add in a bitmap, but, but ah! not like that. What we need to do is take the output and connect it to the gold arrow and then the output of the map to the gold arrow of the B a minute <laughs> and then and then um after the P emitter we gotta add a P render <laughs> so if we bring the P renderer into the first window you'll see we got this and it, it's all in 3d space but that's not quite what we want so in the output mode Switch it to 2D. Now you'll notice this is looking a little bumpy and clumpy, and that's because we gotta adjust some settings in the P emitter. If we go over to region, you'll see we're in a sphere, and that's why we have this little circle thingy, and that's why this is all clumpy. So we're gonna switch that to rectangle. Hey, and then just bring up your height and your width just so it, it fits the screen like this Now this looks like a lot of particles right now But if we go to the beginning of our video, there's not much and that's because in the P emitter <laughs> And the controls it's it here's number okay, and this is the amount of particles It's going to generate over time. So we have 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 there's, there's definitely a tenth one somewhere. Why are you doing this to me? You're embarrassing me in front of everyone. Oh, there it is. It's a, uh, it's hanging out right there. But uh, if we, if we play this, you can see now it's starting to populate, and th that's not what we want. So what we're going to do is bump this up to a number that we kind of like, and then we're gonna add a keyframe, move one frame over, and then bring this number all the way down to zero, so that way it stays the same. Anyways, we gotta go back over to style, and now we can adjust a bunch of things. So like our gain, we're gonna bring that down. This is sort of like the opacity. So I found about 0.1-ish, eh, 0.25, that's fine. You could also adjust the color of this if you want, and uh, add some variance here. Ba-bam, ba-bam, ba-bam. Get wild, get crazy. I'm not gonna do that though. The main thing we're going to focus on is the size. By the way, you can also add some size variants here so you know you get um, a variety of sizes All right, that's how that works but here's the thing we're trying to recreate something that's actually real so it's important to have reference so literally just go on to Google type in lens dirt lens dust whatever you want and then uh, just find like a photo you, you really like now, I don't really like how all of these are clustered up here so we can just go into our controls reseed 
Bam. Oh, you, you know what? That's actually pretty good. So I'm going to leave it there, but you can just hit reseed a bunch of times until you find something you like. Now, before we continue, let's make our lives a little bit easier. This checkered background is just not it. So we're going to go up to these three dots and then uncheck checker underlay. Bam. So this is the reference photo that I'm using, and there's a few things that I'm noticing immediately. Number one, there is a bit of a soft edge and chromatic aberration, so we have to fix that. Luckily, it's super easy. And there's also a little bit of like a hard edge around these. So we also gotta fix that. Now the soft edge, that's really easy. If we go into blur controls, we can bump up well the blur. Chromatic aberration, really simple if we go into our effects templates fusion tools we got chromatic aberration bam ba bam connect that there look at this wait can't really see anything there we go anyways we gotta emulate that hard outer ring and to do that um we're just gonna add a, a mask in the s render we're gonna go to settings apply mask inverted multiply by mask and then now when we adjust uh the level the center is now transparent and we can use the border width to make it bigger or smaller or bigger anyways you probably shouldn't be just viewing this and adjusting it here you're gonna want to select the chromatic aberration node and make all your adjustments here the last thing we got to do is just tie this all in so we're gonna do that uh grab a merge node connect that right here and then take your chromatic aberration connect that to the green arrow ba bam we got some pretty bad looking lens dust dirt thing so why does this look like hot garbage well there's a few reasons number one these particles are just way too bright so in our bm <laughs> We're going to bring down the brightness to uh, 0.1. The main thing is that it's just not interacting properly. We should only see these burger when there's a strong light source. So realistically, it should only be happening around here and then later in the video well, around here. So to fix that, what we're going to do is add a luma gear. We're going to add that below. Connect our media in one to the luma gear. Connect our luma gear. To the blue arrow of the merge and then everything kind of disappeared but not really because like i said we want it applied to the bright parts of the image and if we view the luma gear hey that's the bright parts of the image the, 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 the problem is that it's just only in this area so if we bring down our threshold hey we got more of the lens dirt stuff coming in now this can be really intense on your computer so go to playback render cache make sure smart is checked and then right click the adjustment clip render color cache output and you should get a red bar hold on red bar there you go and then as it turns blue that means it's rendered some stuff anyways that's the end of the video if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment or join the discord and either myself or one of the editing helpers can help you also i want to give a shout out to all the big gassy members the little gassy members you guys are cool too one last thing before i leave we are doing a lot of giveaways in the discord for example we recently just gave away the lens dust effect here so if you want a chance to win these for free uh, join the Discord. The link's down below. Anyways, I gotta go. Goodbye.